We're Chris and Sarah, a husband and wife duo on a mission to experience as much in life as possible. Smelling colors. <laughs> this channel is dedicated to documenting our adventures that have turned into memories that will last a lifetime. We're inviting you to join us as we try new things, meet new friends, and see the world from a new point of view, one adventure at a time. Let's go. Today, we're going to talk to you guys about our gear and what's in our bag. And apparently, we missed the boat on this a long time ago. Apparently, this is like a, everybody does this when they hit a thousand subscribers. So somebody was joking yeah, about this Yeah, so we have, we've never done a gear review. No, this not a, a, no, it's no. not a review. We've never done a video talking about what's in our bags. People have asked us and we just sort of answer the comments here and there, but we've never yeah. actually sat down and talked about what we use to shoot our vlogs and photography and everything. If you're interested in being on YouTube, documenting your life, maybe some of this gear will interest you. This is what we use and what we used in the van. But the reason we haven't done this until now is because we knew that our 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 kit was going to be in transition, and it is changed up officially as of this week. If you guys saw our last video, you know we bought a new camera. We didn't announce which camera it was yet, but that was a big change for us. So you are watching it on the new camera right now. Nothing in this video is sponsored at all. These are just our preferences of things we found we love over the years. Yes, and some of the links down below in the description are affiliate links, and if you don't know what affiliate links are, it's basically a way that the companies thank us for recommending their products. It's at no cost to you. We just get a little kickback, but again, we purchased everything and nothing was given to us. We actually love this stuff. Yeah, a lot of this is unnecessary if you're starting out. This is us having gathered up gear over the last, gosh, some of our gear is- It's old. 10 years old probably. Yeah. So don't watch this video and say, I have to go out and get all of that because you do not. Some of this is stuff that we bring if it's a really, really big trip and we want to have the drone and the multiple cameras and all that. Some of it, if we're just going hiking, we'll take one camera and one lens. So it's pretty a pretty versatile kit. Let's just jump into Let's it. Let's just jump into it. All right. All right. We have both been using Peak Design bags for the last five or six years. It's dirty, but past that, this thing is just as good a shape as when I bought it. Well, I take that back. Kramer, Kramer did not chew much as a puppy. The one thing he did chew was my strap on the bottom of my backpack one day. And this one, it's peak design, it's a messenger bag. It's held up great except for this back zipper. The, it doesn't. Oh, I didn't know that was broken. Mine is held up great. All my zippers work great. Yeah. Tons of storage. They're made for photographers, so they've got all of the like internal uh, camera slots and that kind of thing. Oh, there's my swimsuit. That's so it's got a laptop, and I actually can squeeze my iPad in here too. Cameras, lenses, tons of cables, all of that. This bag has been around the world with me and I love it. I have no intention of changing. They're a great company and they make all sorts of adapters for cameras so you can hook your cameras anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great company, great bag. Can't recommend it enough. When you are editing videos, you need a decent computer. It doesn't have to be the latest or the fanciest. In fact, Chris's computer is five or six years old. Five, and it looks five or six years old and even has a vintage sticker. <laughs> but it's still working strong. His computer, although his computer is four years older than mine, I got mine last year. Mine's still not near as fast as his because at the time I didn't think I was gonna be doing video editing too. I am now a little bit, so I wish I had gone ahead and splurged and gotten a faster computer like his. We wear our stuff out. He will use that until it dies. Yes, which has been pretty close, but it's still kicking. And then we also, not featured here, have two iMacs that we're able to, to work on as well when we are home. When we're traveling, these are our main, main yeah. go-tos. My computer is newer, which is why we started van life with the iMacs in the van. Um, my last laptop was not good. We hadn't bought new ones. We've since invested, which is why we switched our iMacs out of the van. So if you've ever been curious why we put iMacs in the van, it's because we didn't have thousands of dollars to go buy new laptops. No, we couldn't afford one, so we, <laughs> so we took what we had. Shoved that iMac in that van. And <laughs> there we go. Next up, we have hard drives. This is the nightmare that won't end when you're taking lots of photos and videos. You, we, I, we joke that we need to start buying hard drives. You know how on Amazon you can just get like a monthly delivery of another, <laughs> uh, you know, certain things you can subscribe to. That's hard drives yeah. for us. That's what we buy each other for birthdays, for anniversaries, 
So this right here was the most exciting purchase we've made besides the camera in a very long time. This is a game changer. It really is a game changer. But let's talk first. Okay. This was our previous setup. What we would do is we'd put, we'd each carry around two hard drives in a Pelican case because we did not want to drop and break the hard drives. So inside we would each carry a one or two terabyte. So this is, I have a total of two terabytes. Chris would usually carry around four terabytes because I would do photos, he would do videos. And then we put them in the Pelican case because you could drop it pretty much anywhere and it'd be okay and you wouldn't worry about destroying them. And these are the typical hard drives too. You know, they have the disc mm -hmm. and spins, yeah. Yeah, this worked well, but it was always bulky. I would just throw it in my backpack and it was always in the way. And then recently we bought this, which is an F, what is it, SD? It's an SSD. SSD. It's an SSD, which means it's a solid state drive, meaning it doesn't have this disc that spins and you can access your files pretty fast. And it's look small. how small it is. Which when you're traveling and you're trying to keep everything in one bag and it's all about a minimalistic approach, having a small hard drive makes a difference. Now granted, these are more expensive. We'll link everything down below, but this is a one terabyte hard drive and I think it was 150 or 200 for this, whereas a one terabyte of those is no more than 100, I think. Correct. We'll link both of them, but this, what we do is we each have one of the small SSD hard drives that we carry around. We fill it up and then we dump it off either in the cloud or on a cheaper hard drive that we store at home in a safe or somewhere secure. Yes, so these are always our work hard drives. Our on the road hard our drives. Our on the road hard drives. And once we fill it up, like Sarah said, we'll dump it off. Pro tip, you can buy them for cheaper at Costco. As you know, we just purchased a new camera. Before the new camera, we were using this, which is the Panasonic GH5. And then on it, we had a 15 millimeter 1.7 lens on the front. This camera has served us very well. Very well. The um, GH5, a lot, of, like it's a good camera. We are not knocking this camera. The internal stabilization is really mm -hmm. good. I, I mean, you can run and gun. I'm running around. We never used a gimbal on this. Actually, we used a gimbal one time and then we took it off because it was... We it, just didn't need it. You just didn't need it. It's too bulky. It's super good. The autofocus... <laughs> the autofocus in this stinks beyond anything. Okay, but let's talk about why we chose this camera because you may be in the market and you're looking for something in this price range. We chose this camera because of its internal stabilization. Ultimately, that's it. We knew almost immediately we did not want to be running around with a gimbal because the first two videos on our YouTube channel, we shot with an old Canon and the Canon had no internal stabilization really. We were having to use the gimbal and we quickly realized we hated that. It just, mm -hmm. it takes you out of the moment. It's too much thinking, it's too heavy, it's awkward, clunky. So we knew that when we went to the camera shop, we wanted one with inter internal stabilization. Since then, other cameras have really caught up with the internalization, internal stabilization um, technology, and then there's other things that we started to realize that are really important to us. Primarily, we did not want a crop sensor. This had a crop sensor, and from the photography standpoint, it drove me nuts. Even shooting on this, like we have a 15 millimeter lens on this, which really equates on a crop sensor, it's like a 25 or 30 millimeter. Like you don't really get that much. It's always just floating heads for us. You're always can, super close up. We could never hold it far enough away. Yeah. So, and just for those of you who are not camera sensitive, like you have no clue what we're talking about. Crop sensor means it's cropped in. Full frame, you get more of the picture. You get to see more. So when you put the lens on it, it's gonna get more in the image. Whereas this, you're always, it doesn't size it quite right, at least for me. Like Chris said, the autofocus in this camera is, is not good. I mean, you can do it. A lot of photographers and videographers really prefer just doing all manual focus anyway. So if you're really going for cinematography, like you really wanna do these fine-tuned videos, not so much vlogging, the focus may not bother you because you may do all manual focus so you have smoother focusing mm -hmm. and transitioning, that kind of thing. For us, when we're just wanting to turn it on and have the camera quickly focus because you need to grab it in a second because it's all of our all of our stuff it's not scripted it's usually no, very we're just running candid. around and we're trying we're trying to capture those candid moments those authentic moments and then half the footage we have that's really candid and like we love it's all blurry mm -hmm. you know it doesn't look good so yeah so we knew that autofocus was going to be a priority so without further ado let's introduce you to our new camera we just purchased the sony a7s3 and that's a big commitment it's a yeah. big camera 
if you watch any other YouTubers, like bigger YouTubers, I feel like a lot of them have this camera. A variation of the Sony Alpha series, it's yeah. the Sony A. It's a really expensive camera, especially if you're starting out, you do not need no. an expensive camera like this. This for us was a big upgrade for a couple of reasons. Number one, we have both been shooting on different cameras and different lenses for a long time now. I still shoot on Nikon. I have the Nikon Z6, we'll talk about that in a minute. By purchasing this big camera, it came with the understanding that we were selling our old cameras, our old lenses, and ultimately going down to one system, which it took a very long time to get us on the same page, but Sony yes. is the route we're going. So we've had many conversations about this. Heated conversations about who's better. And the reason why this camera makes both of us happy is that it has the internal stabilization. It has amazing autofocus, like um, amazing. The, right. the bit we've used in a week or two is just, oh my word, so game changing. It got to the point to where I wasn't even checking the camera. Like I just trusted it and it worked which is not a good place to be, but. But when you're vlogging like we are and you're just in the moment and you don't wanna be constantly having to fix the focus and you just wanna turn it on and capture that moment because something spontaneous just happened, you want good autofocus. And this camera has delivered 100% so far. Yes. The other reason that we chose the A7S III versus like the A7S, A7S, I'm still learning all the Sony's, A7S or the A7C, which I actually tried out um, for two weeks recently, we went with this one because it's full frame. Yeah, I will say that the internal stabilization on this camera is not as good as the GH5. I would say it's very comparable though. It's very good. I think the GH5 is just a tiny bit better. Just a tiny bit better, but I think some of that is just that it feels like they both react differently. But this is like, we are not technical reviewers. We are just, this is what we've learned in the field kind yeah. of thing. So with this, we did purchase a new lens mm -hmm. to go with our camera. Yes. So the first lens we purchased, because we are easing our way in, this is not a cheap hobby to get into, is the one right now, it's 16 to 35 2.8 Sony. It also adds that depth of field. If this is our one lens we're gonna have right now, especially for vlogging, and we wanna just hold it up, get a selfie type shot of us walking around, we want it to have good depth of field and have the blurred background while it's still in our faces. It just adds a little bit of um, dimension to your yeah. shots. And since it's a wide angle lens, we're able to pull this ca this camera out and see more of the background. Mm -hmm. So it's not just these talking heads anymore of us explaining what we're seeing. You can actually see, see what's going on around us. It's amazing. Our having a wide angle is just a game changer. If you didn't know, let me pull it though at the camera. All of our vlogs, our 98 previous YouTube videos, were shot with this one prime lens and it was not a crazy expensive lens. Yeah. Every single shot you saw was on this one prime lens. Well, you do not have to have crazy gear to make decent videos. No, it, there was one that we actually shot on this, our iPhone, and it was one of the very first like FAQ videos. Oh yeah, we shot a few videos on that. You can use what you've got. Yeah, we used an iPhone for this and we just drove around and we talked and you guys listened. So this camera is around $3,500 for the body only. We know that's a huge, huge price tag. If you're wanting to go Sony, you want full frame, you want good internal stabilization, consider the Sony a7C, because that's a full frame, less expensive option of this. The main, the main reason we didn't go with that is just, we could notice a slight difference in internal stabilization, and we really wanted, that was a high priority for us. So we ended up splurging the extra thousand-ish dollars yeah. to get this one. Love this camera. I'm sure we'll have more to say about it in the future, but so far, like, we could not be happier. There's a reason why a lot of people are using this camera. A lot of cameras have, like, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities, but both of our cam previous cameras mm. were not great at this. Her Nikon, specifically. It just disconnects from the app oh. all the time, so when we're trying to use like the remote photography feature. Sure, we could probably buy an extra remote, but why would we want to buy and carry around one more option when we already have our iPhones on us? So a lot of these new smart cameras have the apps that come with them. I'm sure probably all of them do. Sony, Panasonic, Nikon, they all have yeah. it now. But my Nikon, I love shooting photos of that camera. I've been Nikon since I was a kid. The app was terrible. Like it it caused so many bad words to come out because I was trying to get this picture of us and you know, you're trying to get the lighting, the focus, the, the dog to smile too. <laughs> like you're trying to get all these things to work and then it just disconnects the second you hit the shutter and it was awful. So honestly, Sony's app 
I, I had really low expectations because I just thought that's how all of the apps and the cameras were going to be. It's blown us away. The first time we took a photo with it, we're like, this is what it's supposed to be like? It could be like this? <laughs> wow. And then our photos. Up until really probably now, this is probably going to be sold here in the next week or two. Um, I have been shooting Nikon. I had the Nikon D4, which is a really, really, really big camera. And then I switched to mirrorless about a year and a half or two years ago. I got the Nikon Z6. Truthfully, I love this camera for photos. Like this camera is amazing for photography. It has everything I love about Nikon. I just love the feel of it. I love the way it shoots. The quality is great and it's smaller. It's a mirrorless and it is at the time, I'm not sure if it still is. I think it was the smallest mirrorless full frame camera you could get which was very important to me because like I said, I love full frame and I really wanted the lighter weight of the mirrorless since we're always hiking, since we're traveling, I was tired of carrying on that massive D4. The only reason we're getting rid of it is because we're just gonna try to move all to Sony um, and ultimately one day we'd like to have two identical cameras with different lenses on them. So if we had like a zoom on one and a wide angle lens on the other, and one shooting photos, one shooting video, we can just toss them back and forth and they're all set the same. So when we import it into the computer, the footage just looks very cohesive versus like having some on Nikon, have some on Sony. If you're in the market for a Z6 or a 24 to 72.8, hit me up. So the, the other camera that we have is the GoPro Hero 8. There is a nine now, isn't there? There is a nine. So this is the old model. But you can't tell. They, they come out with a new model every year. <laughs> I honestly love this GoPro. It's so fun. It's fun. The stabilization in it is amazing. You don't even, I mean, it's just amazing what they're able to do with GoPro this. has mastered stabilization better than any other camera. This little thing, I, oh, it's so fun. It is fun. Like this is our, this is our Kramer cam. Yeah, Kramer, everything with Kramer's on this, in the beach, where, wherever. Like, oh, there's sand in it now. I guess that's okay. Oh yeah, there is sand. And in fact, in one of our last videos, we went to Scottsboro, Alabama and to the Unclaimed Baggage Center. If you haven't seen that, you need to watch that video. But one of the purchases I did for $2.09 is one of those floaty things for the GoPro. So now we can go into the water and not I'm not afraid to like drop it so it'll yeah. float. <laughs> so we have a few accessories. We have this little handheld tripod. Chris ran with this thing the entire marathon at Disney a year or two ago. Um, it extends a little bit. It has little tripods for doing selfie stuff. It works. And then on top of this, we have like the suction cup to go on the side of the van, yes. which gets some cool shots. We yeah. have the plastic case to keep it safe. And we have a chest mount. Yeah. So there's a bunch of fun little attachments. They will get you on attachments. GoPro will. So it's one of those things like the unclaimed baggage store is a great place because instead of paying, what, 30 bucks for that thing, we paid two bucks. Kinda. Sweet. I think my one critique on GoPro, and this may just be because I'm not the best videographer in the world, these things shoot world's better in direct bright sunlight. So when it's really blue and sunny and partly cloudy kind of thing, they do amazing. When you get to low light, the color yeah. gets really wonky and it just, it doesn't shoot well. The other camera, da -da -da -da. Oh my word. So we have our drone right here, which is one of my favorite cameras to shoot with. We have a case by moment, which we love. So our drone is a few years old, but it is the DJI Mm, is it Mavic? Mavic Zoom. Mavic Zoom. And so this was the first model that they came out with, uh, with the Zoom. Um, or this is the Mavic 2, I'm sorry. They have since upgraded. I think they have the Mavic Pro now or, or something like that. All the names are so what? confusing I mean, in these cameras. Anyway, this is a great, great, great drone. It's small. Every drone shot that you've seen on our channel has come from this. We always carry one extra battery and the remote. And the remote. And the battery is what, like 30 minutes life on it or so? Yeah, I mean, you can typically get about 20 to 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say the only time that I've ever crashed it, the battery still said it had five minutes left. And then, and it, um, died. then it died. And I was fortunate enough that it kind of glided over the canyon and not down into the, the deep of the, uh, the waterfall that day. I'm uh, so glad I wasn't watching when this <laughs> happened. I was unaware this was going on. <laughs> so just be aware that if the battery, just always take it at a safety precaution. Talk to them briefly about why you chose the zoom versus like the hospital. Like why was that important and how do you, yeah. cause there's some cool effects that we do where the camera's going forward, but he'll zoom it back out or vice mm -hmm. versa. And it gives us really weird. You may be wondering, how did he do that? There's some cool motions you can do with this, and on top of it, it just gives you more, um, 
I guess you can do a lot more with it as far as like yeah. movement in the videos by zooming in. Like you can get more variety. Yes, you can get more variety and you're not putting yourself in danger. Like if you're wanting to fly close to a lighthouse, you don't have to be directly on that lighthouse. You could zoom in and be a little bit out, you know? So it gives you just a little, little bit more variety. You're able to to do a lot with the zoom lens. I do. I will say that if you zoom in all the way, you can start noticing some of the distortion mm -hmm. um, in the lens. You'll see a lot more noise, so you do want to take that into account. But for the most part, it's really good. It's a and great solid little it, drone. It really, it's a great drone. And if you don't know, we did a drone video a while back about, um, if you're flying a drone for a YouTube channel, you do need uh, the part 107. And so, I took a course. Where whether or not you're monetized does not matter. Whether or not you're monetized, you need to take the PAR 107. It's just a safety precaution. One, it's a safety precaution. It saves you uh, uh, time in the long run, and you're able to know more about what you need to do. Because the, the, the last thing you want to do is fly a drone in, in some area of the country that you're not supposed to fly it, and it could be a military air zone or, or national park, and then you get fined a bunch of money. Yeah. So. We'll link the course down below that I took if you're interested in getting certified. Um, I highly recommend it. It's great. One more thing though. A lot of people are under the impression that there's that drone by DJI and there's probably other oh, companies yeah. too that are, was it one grand beneath the legal registration number? You still have to have the part 107 have have for, that, for that drone. You have to register the drone, which this one was already registered before we got the part 107. And then you have to take the part 107. That little tiny drone, you still have to have it because it's the intention of the footage. and. These drone laws are only gonna get so much more difficult. The reason they're cracking down the part 107 now is because there's a lot more being lobbied for right yeah. now to keep people safe. Yeah, and there's a difference and there's a difference between regulation and registration. Mm -hmm. So the one gram means you don't have to register it, but you still have to follow the regulations, the laws, the air laws. So Yeah. That's a whole nother thing. But that video is helpful, so we'll link down the video, the, we'll link the part 107 course down below and also the video if you're interested in that drone information. Also with the new camera and new camera lens, we did buy a UV filter. We always put UV filters on our lenses. They sort of double duty, they cut down on atmospheric haze, which is sort of what the main purposes people think of when they think of putting a UV filter on the camera, but it also keeps your camera lens safe. Prime example is my 24 to 70 lens that I love. Kramer was a puppy and he knocked my camera off on the floor and it shattered the filter. I thought the entire camera lens was just completely shattered. We have a picture of it, we'll put it in here. But that little $80, little $80 filter saved my $2,000 lens. That was not a good day to come home. No. Tripods! We have a couple of different tripods. This is my favorite. It's called the Switch Pod, and you can hold it like this. You put the camera on the mount, and you're able to, you know, hold it up and get that perfect selfie view. And then you can like. Yes. So this is a newer thing. A lot of people still use the Gorilla Pods. We used to have one of those. I did not like that Gorilla she Pod. She hated. She hated that thing. It was clunky, and it would just. It never. This one. Well, yeah. So this one, I like it. We can both agree on this because it goes flat and you can just slip in the side of the truck or in the side of the backpack or even inside the backpack itself. It's thin. It's a lot less clunky and obtrusive yeah, than the Gorilla. It, it's great. And then the people who made it are great. Great people. Great company. It just adds a little extra yeah, control over the camera got, movement. We do have one more tripod, which the camera is up on right now. Uh, it's the Manfrotto Element. It's like their traveler kind of tripod. That was really, I think, the best option for travel tripods at the time. At to the our time. knowledge, it was in our budget. But since then, Peak Design, who makes our backpacks, actually has come out with another tripod that I really have my eye on, but it's not urgent to buy because we don't use a tripod a lot. But that's another yeah. one to consider. But this one, we use it for shots like this when we're at home. We use it really more for photos than we do video. Actually, I don't think we ever use a tripod in our normal everyday vlogs. We always carry it with us since we're usually traveling in our van. That just stays on the headliner shelf over the cab and we just use it as we need to. We don't usually typically take it with us on hikes and stuff. If we want to get a picture or a shot of us walking in front of the camera in a vlog, we'll typically just opt for the switch pod and then put it up on a rock or a tree or something like that instead of taking that massive tripod out. Random accessories that we keep in our backpack that are sort of essential. Headphones, good headphones. We have identical ones. We They're call by, these the marriage savers. We actually got that from um, the dangers. They, <laughs> they are on a boat. They have, I 
think are they on YouTube? They're on Instagram, I know that. But they call these the marriage savers and they are so right. We both have good noise canceling headphones. These were a Christmas present a few years ago and they've held up really well by Bose, we'll link them. Camera straps. This is by Peak Design also. We both have Peak Design camera straps. This camera strap has had it, I've had it six or seven years now and it's still in good shape. It's just the, the rubber has started to leave like little black marks on my shoulders and my shirts and stuff. But Peak Design's camera straps, super comfortable. It's got like a little cushion. So even with my massive Nikon D4 and my big lens on it, it didn't give me like neck pain like a lot of camera straps do. So we'll be putting this one or a new one on the new camera as well because they are just the most flexible. You can hook them up at a variety of points with the little hooks, like even on the bottom. So on my big camera, I would hook it up on the bottom. It would actually hang more naturally versus um, sort of hitting me on the hip constantly. One of the most important things in our videos, we do a lot of voiceovers. So we have two, actually we have two or three different types of voice setups. This is the really professional uh, version. This is a, I think it's pronounced Heel, H-E-I-L. Yeah. How you know, much is this sucker? This sucker is about $350. Oh, I didn't know that. I bought this a long time ago it's when I- my days with you. When I was trying to get into podcasting, I'm like, oh, if people are podcasting, I need a mic. And so this thing, it, it sounds great. A great, great, great microphone. But on the road, we don't like to take this. Mm -hmm. And so we have a couple of different options. One are these Rode lapel mics right here. And it has this adapter for the iPhone. So it's an auxiliary and then it goes right there. So we'll do our voiceovers from this instead of using the camera microphone, or we actually just use the iPhone without the lapel mic sometimes and it works okay. These are our voiceover options. So we do a lot of voice voiceovers for the stel for the storytelling elements in the videos. You'll probably notice that it's how we bridge gaps in the stories. It's how we do a better setting of the scene, that kind of thing. Uh, but those are options for voiceover. But when we're shooting just everyday vlogging, we keep a microphone on the camera. It's a little inexpensive Rode microphone. And we actually have two different Rode microphones, but the inexpensive one that we're using right now is actually our favorite. Yeah. I think it, it's 50 bucks. No, 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 it's uh, 150 or something. No, no, that's not. Yeah, they've gone on price. Have they really? Yeah. That was like 49 bucks we bought last year. No, no, I promise. Golly. The less expensive Rode mic, it works great. It's about as small as you can get. I mean, it looks like a fuzzy animal on top of our camera. It will draw more attention than the camera will in any everyday vlogging setting. Mm -hmm. Sony does have a um, digital microphone, which I think we're gonna try out. I don't know if we're gonna buy it. It's like $350, but that's on our radar. We may buy it. It's smaller and it doesn't require cords or batteries. So it just like digitally attaches straight to the camera. It's really cool. Yeah. And for now we're using this. Yeah. Lots of different mics, like Chris said, we don't carry that really big, nice one. You don't need that really big, nice one. You could get away with just the one on top of the camera if you're starting out. You don't need everything. I do recommend getting some sort of microphone to put on your camera if you're shooting vlogs. Even if you're doing um, iPhone shooting, good sound makes such a difference. Yeah. So invest in the microphone. It doesn't have to be crazy expensive. People forgive bad video, but they don't forgive audio. You, which you may not think about that when you're watching other people's videos, but you'll instantly know if you can't understand them, if there's too much wind going on, it just seems like a bad video, bad quality. Yeah. So get a microphone. iPhones are a huge tool for the apps for shooting with the camera. I know everybody has a phone these days, but we love iPhone for the apps for shooting, so like setting up shots with the photos. I'm just shooting photos and video. Like we get, yeah. I can't tell you how many times we don't have our cameras or we're in the moment and we don't want to draw attention to ourselves, we'll whip out our camera on our phones and just use that to shoot a quick shot because- This still shoots 4K. Yeah. I mean, it's honestly for what it is, it's amazing quality. Like if, if your two options are saving your money to get the camera you really want in a year or two or buying like a point and shoot camera now, but you already have the iPhone, I'd say use the iPhone for now and keep saving your money for that camera you really want because that can carry you pretty far for now. It can because people really rely on the gear and that's not, that's a false statement. Don't, and I, you've probably heard that a thousand times, but I would rather craft the storytelling capabilities and how you convey your video and then upgrading gear rather than buy all the fanciest gear and not know how to tell a story. Mm, I agree with that 100%. Actually, is this a good time to say we're working on a film course? Should we do an email list? Sure. All right, so speaking of storytelling, we're by no means saying we're the best vloggers in the world, but we've learned a thing or two, especially in regards to storytelling and videos and making an impactful video. 
if you're interested in learning how we sort of craft our videos, how we story tell, how we edit all of our videos, that's 90% Chris. Um, we're gonna actually have a course coming out very soon, date TBD, but it's been written. We're just in the process of recording it. Yeah. Um, so there's an email list down below if you wanna sign up and be notified when we do have that course come out. Um, we'll even have like an affiliate program for that if you guys wanna join. And if you love the course, share it with your friends. I'm really excited. It, it's taken us, what, two years to get this out? Oh, we really wanted yeah. it to be right. Yeah, we want it to be right. We want you to be able to, to follow along and like, learn something and so we we really are big believers in developing a skill set and we don't want to just you know be the best that you can be sort of thing no like we're going to give you the right tools and the right kind of mindset on on how to get there yeah i'm chris's guinea pig in this because i don't know how to video edit i'm learning so he is we're crafting the course by him teaching me and so that we know we're not missing any of the holes and how to teach you guys because I don't know what I'm doing. So if I can understand it, then you can understand it. So that's where we are. It looks exactly like the Karate Kid right now. It's just like I'm wax on, wax off. That's all it is. All right, are we done? That was a lot. I think, I think we've said this thousands, thousands of times in the past. You do not need all this gear. And just know that we did not buy all of this overnight. And this has been years and years of collecting. And business write-offs. Yeah. And we use this gear for his normal job and then this job. and. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It stresses me out when I think about how much money we spend on camera gear. Yeah, yeah. But it's, we love it and it's worth it to us. It pays for itself times over. If you're getting started, you do not need all of this. And if you have any questions about maybe you want a less expensive option for a camera or you want to get started with, you know, apps to edit your videos, drop that in the comments below. We'll try to do our best to answer those questions, but a lot of those will also be addressed in our video course. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching this really in-depth, not de too detailed. Chris and Sarah blabbing about technology. Yeah. If you'd like to hear more. No. This is our setup. You guys may have suggestions. If you have something that you just yeah. absolutely love and you're like, you did not talk about that. We probably have missed something. I try to go through our bags very thoroughly. But yeah. if you see something and you're like, they need that or they don't need that, just drop it in the comments. We'll drop argue it. you, but drop, drop it in the comments. Or you can send it to our P.O. box. We'll put the address down below too. All right, guys. All right. Talk to y'all later. Bye. Kramer, why are you standing on my computer?